So in this little chapter, uh, we're going to take a look at um, building a simple demo Lego robot um, that will go along with the Arduino and battery plate here. Um, again, the only real constraint on any robot you build here uh, is that you're going to want it to be able to somehow connect to the Lego down here. I've got just a very simple thing. Uh, again, you can make any robot you want. I'm just going to show you what this will look like when it's put together. You know, I just sort of will be able to stretch this a little and plug this in. Well, probably. Oh yes, there we go. And, you know, it'll look like this. Um, actually, probably an easier design in terms of a connection scheme might actually be to just have four vertical posts in your robot that you could just sort of drop this whole thing onto and then easily take it off. Uh, so I just want to point out some things about the design considerations I put into doing this very simple robot. Um, so the plan here is we're going to have two drive wheels. So each wheel is going to be able to have its own motor and spin independently. Uh, that way when they both turn forward together, it goes forward, backward together, goes backwards. And if they spin at different rates, uh, we'll be able to get it to do a turn. And then there is a third wheel down here, which is just a ball in a socket. Uh, and the only thing that's doing is it's just making the robot keep its balance from falling over forwards or backwards. A um, couple other things to keep in mind. Uh, the wheels are this big. And here's your motor. Uh, you can see it from the side here. So um, pretty clearly, unless you uh, put together a whole bunch of gears to make a change, uh, the height, when the wheel goes on here, uh, you're going to need this to clear the ground. Uh, so you're probably going to want the motor to go with this side down uh, rather than trying to do it the other way around because then it would be too high. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to tear this thing apart because great thing about Legos, you can do that. Uh, we'll see if I actually remember how to put it back together again when we're all done. If not, then I may just have to build something else. So, another thing to keep in mind um, is it's nice if your robot is reasonably stable. So if I hadn't sort of had those bars you just saw between these things, then you'd see that, uh, you know, these two things could kind of go like this. And I really don't want that. I want to keep these things uh, relatively rigid together. Um, so these things have various holes in them uh, that you can use for mounting things however you want. Um, what I decided to do was I just took sort of an axle piece and I'm not really going to use it as an axle, just sort of as a support. And then I used one of these little pin connectors that has an axle uh, hole at one end and just a regular pin at the other. And then I just sort of threw it in here uh, into one of these holes and lined it up with the same thing on the other end. And that makes it somewhat rigid, but let's go a little more. Uh, and so I took one of these uh, pieces. It's got two pins on each side. It's nice and rigid. Uh, put it into this back piece here. And same on the other motor. And then I just used a pretty big uh, lift arm or beam uh, over here. Uh, let's see, I'll try to center it a little more. Not that that really matters for our purposes here. And, you know, then I'm going to want to have something to put this wheel on. Uh, and so what I did here was um, that little piece I used to connect this bar has holes here. So I just put some pins in it 
I seem to have misplaced one of them. We'll just use one for now then. Sort of through this beam here. And then the whole idea of this wheel is really to be just fairly frictionless and free to spin in any direction. Uh, so what I did was some of the pens are uh, frictionless, some have friction ridges, you'll be able to tell the difference eventually. When you plug it in, this thing spins freely. If it had friction ridges, it wouldn't. Um, and again, this other end uh, is also fairly free spinning. And so, you know, I try to put this sort of in the middle hole there. And there you go. Again, one thing to keep in mind, and I'll show you in how this works in just a minute. Let's put a wheel or two on here. So there are all sorts of ways to connect wheels and axles and things. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, um, I happen to be using a, a little axle that has a little stud at the end. Um, hard to see that, but it basically prevents the axle from pushing all the way through. Um, so that sort of stops it. And, oh, by the way, one thing to point out about these wheels is the wheel and the rim are separate. So, you know, it's just sort of like a bicycle tire, so you, if it comes apart, you just kind of put it back on the rim. There we go. Um, of course, I now discover that with this short pen that I, axle, that I happen to have picked here, uh, gee, that wouldn't be long enough to connect here. Um, so, what I did here was to use a longer axle pen, again, one that happens to have a stop on it, and I pushed it through from the inside. This sticks out a little. Okay, now I've got two axle things, and oh good, I found a piece that's an axle connector that has an axle on both ends. One of the great things about Legos is pretty much you just look around at all of your parts and see what you can throw together in an interesting way. And that's really all I did. There was no um, amazing design principle at work, aside from sort of the minimum of, well, the wheels have to touch the ground. And I want it to be kind of sort of rigid. So uh, here we go. You can see that the <laughs> wheels are lower. Sorry, the wheels are lower than the motor so that, you know, when it sits on the ground, there you go. Um, as you throw designs together, you know, you may notice that this wheel either is or isn't level with the other wheels. It doesn't matter a ton. Uh, clearly, you don't want to have your <laughs> robot like jacked up all the way like this uh, or leaning all the way down like that. Sort of well level is good. Um, and then, okay, great. So I've got something. It's got two wheels, balance wheel, couple of motors, reasonably rigid. And now I've just got to come up with some way or other to connect it to this thing. Um, so all I did uh, for this is I just took a couple of these 3x5Ls and stuck some uh, pins in it. And I uh, put them together like this. And use these other mount holes on the motor to put it together like that. And since my Arduino power is back here, uh, and I've got the circuit board here, I'm going to plan on disconnecting the motors through the back area. So here I'll line up the board so that the back of the Arduino plug is the uh, same end of the robot as the motors. Again, you can do that any way you want. And uh, I've also just put in some pins here so that they will connect to this thing and put this in here and you know you will probably discover sometimes you need to play around with these things uh, you know figure out the right spacing sometimes you need a different part uh, I will suddenly discover here that this was not the way I had it lined up before well, let's try to figure that one out uh, so we seem to have had it like that 
Oh, and let's see, try to make it the same on both sides, right? And, oh good, looks like it'll fit like this. One other thing to uh, keep in mind um, with robots is uh, their center of mass. So, you know, where's the heaviest part of the robot? Uh, these batteries are pretty much the heaviest thing on the robot and these motors. Uh, you want to keep the center of mass relatively low to the ground. Um, the reason you want to do that is if you imagine if all of the weight were up top uh, and suddenly your robot hit something uh, down low near the ground, uh, it would tend to tip over and do a face plant. Uh, or similarly, if you happen to be going around a curve at high speed, if you ever notice those highway signs that show a truck tipping over, uh, that's because their center of mass is higher than for a typical car. Um, so, you know, again, as you're designing robots, you can put this Arduino and battery platform wherever you want, but I don't recommend uh, trying to put it way up high on a robot. Keeping it down low is a good idea. Uh, okay, and uh, in our next segment, I'll show you an example of wiring this thing up and uh, writing a very simple program to just get it to move forward and backwards.